Hi everyone, this is Vivi Cameron here. Welcome to a new video. Today we are going to be making these two cards and I'm going to be sharing a couple of super duper easy coloring techniques for the background and also how to make this card base. In a previous video, I show you how easy it is to make this using hard dies and you can use dies in different sizes. To give you more ideas, I also made this super cute card that also includes a pop-up inside and it was made using a circular die. I have a tutorial on my blog, it's just with pictures to show you how to do that. But it's pretty much the same than doing any of these cards using different dies. The difference here and the reason because I decided to make this video is because this is a large format card, it measures 5 inches by 7 inches and it's going to allow you to create side folding cards and top folding cards. This will be the same with the square dies. When using oval, circle or hard dies, you can only create top folding cards. And that's just one of the simple things that you need to be in mind when designing your cards. The second thing you need to be in mind is that you need paper coordination depending the card you're creating. So I'm going to use an A4 sheet of cardstock to create my own 5 by 7 inches card base. And I'm going to use the same paper for the inside of the card. So I'm just scoring this in half and I'm going to apply a partial die cutting technique using this rectangular die here to die cut the inserts that are going to go inside the card. I can get two of these from that piece of cardstock and I have to make sure that the blade of the die is not touching the top folding of that card, but it's very close. So when I run this through the die cutting machine, that blade is not going to cut the top folding. And I'm going to get a mini card base like this. For this card design, you don't need to have this die. You can also use a craft knife or use a trimmer. Because I have the die, I prefer to use the die to guarantee perfect fit of the pieces. And sadly, you won't be able to apply a partial die cutting technique on this large card base using your spell binders, platinum six inches. You are going to need a large format die cutting machine. And I'm not a fan of this die cutting machine to do a partial die cutting, and I'm going to show you why in a minute. For now, we are going to place the card base folded on the machine and the cutting plate is not touching the bottom blade of that rectangular die. So it won't cut the bottom of the card base. And if you see there, I'm running this three times on the die cutting machine. So that it will cut the 600 grams of paper that is there because this is very thick cardstock. So, I got this done properly and this car base is looking okay. But then what happened with this kind of very strong die cutting machines is that they mark the paper. If you run this just once to avoid marking the paper, then probably the second layer of your car base is not going to cut. And you might need to use a craft knife to finish the cutting. The plate of this machine marks the paper. And this is not nice. I don't like this. And this might happen to you and you will hate this. And if you are like me, <laughs> it marks the paper in the back as well. So you can see all the little marks and indentations of the papers. I don't like them at all. So I fight them and I use an eraser and also the bone folder to try to smooth them out. And that helped a little bit. But then I put the car base inside out and that solved the problem because in that way, all those marks are going to be inside uh, this area here that I'm going to cover with the inner panel that I'm just gluing there. And I'm obsessed with this car design using different die shapes because it's a really great platform to create. So once you have your car base, then you can start making all kinds of things. You can add a little pocket inside and you can add a gift card or money 
and you know it's the first time you have a car base has your starting point when usually it's the last thing you are worried about and today i want to show you two super duper easy panels to add onto these car bases so i'm going to use this strathmore watercolor paper and again i'm going to die cut the panels using the rectangular die so that guarantee a perfect fit i read bad reviews about this paper and i'm not sure if i agree with them at five dollars the paper pad i found it great for car making and especially to do backgrounds like this so i'm going to use karine markers and i'm using here three different colors to apply directly on the paper like so and i'm not going to speed the video here this is the real time i need to be in mind that these markers stain the paper so i need to blend these colors quickly or i will be able to see the traces of the marker on the paper and that won't be nice so i start blending this and if you see i'm going from the yellow shade to the green i clean the brush and then i do it again this is to avoid the yellow area to get green or blue i just want the three colors to look seamless but not all together not all blended next i'm going to use a heat tool to dry this up and once this is dry i'm going to stamp my image over i'm choosing this beautiful image from reflection tree stamp set by colorado craft and i'm going to stamp this using versafine onyx black ink i'm also using the misty and this is the latest version of this stamping tool that allow me to stamp over and over to achieve a very crisp and beautiful image now i'm going to use a little bit of the black marker diluted with water and i'm going to splatter the paper i'm also going to splatter the paper using a nouveau shimmer pen and white acrylic paint diluted in water as well so that add a little bit of texture nothing fancy and i'm going to show you a second option to do this so i'm going to grab three random distress inks i didn't think about what colors to choose to be honest i just grabbed three of them from my drawer and i apply this over the watercolor paper using a medium size blending brush when i was doing this i wasn't sure about this color combo and i say oh my goodness what i have done but at the end it didn't look that bad so one of the things that you need to be in mind always is that when you splatter your paper or you spray water over a distress ink background you always will fix anything that you might not like it's like magic you can just stamp over that panel and it will guarantee a nice composition it doesn't really matter what you do there you just need to splatter this a little bit allow the inks to dry and i also decided to add a little bit of that blue ink from the karin marker mix it with water uh, over the tree and also over the gear dress and i did more splattering here and uh, i noticed that the karin markers completely cover the ink colors it's just super cool so that's something to be in mind as well and i just stamped the sentiment directly on that panel another option for sentiments is to create a little banner and the sentiments of this stamp set are absolutely gorgeous i'm featuring here a new tool that i have for quite a while but i never show it in videos because it's something so simple that you have behind the scenes and it's to cut banners and to make your banners more substantial i advise to add a layer of mirror cardstock behind or another cardstock color that match with your project that really adds a lot of value to your cards or your compositions for cheaper postage you can just paste this directly on the card base and if you want to pay more postage you can also use dimensionals last december i paid a fortune in christmas card postage because all of them have dimension and it was very little dimension so it's something i have been building in mind for this year to try to create more flat cards for you so that we can actually send them without having to do a big 
financial effort. This has been challenging times for everyone. So here I also wanted to share a uh, more affordable paper, different ways that you can also create with your markers, with your watercolors or anything else that you might have available. I'm also embellishing these with some tiny sequins in the shape of butterflies. You can skip that, you can use other sequins. You can also use Nubo drops. The sky is the limit. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel or visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.